Get your energy up. Get it up. Live on TV. Get it up. Amanda, I'm telling oh. Ryan to get it up. Is this a normal occurrence? Ryan, get your energy up. Get it up. Come on. Now do the cold open. Okay, we get a lot of shots. Everybody come to the net. We, we just have to get more and more pucks to the net. I'm about to listen to pucks on net. We used to talk about it in Vancouver getting pucks on net. And pucks on net. What were you saying about putting pucks on net? This is JT Miller with the Vancouver Canucks, and you're listening to Pucks on Net. Pucks on net and, and uh, driving and making a hard night on them. Live on tape uh, from our apartment above the grounds, the old haunted Burger King. This is Pucks on Net, a Vancouver hockey podcast riddled with rampant speculation without sources. My name is Ryan Chap. I am going to be your host for the evening. Uh, two quick links for you, youtube.com slash pucks on We hope you're watching this podcast in stunning high-definition video. And you can also support the show at patreon.com slash pucks on net. Sitting to my camera right Hi. is the it's Prince of Pome- Pomegranate, Yeah, Mr. Arash Mamarzadeh. If you guys are wondering why Ryan is stuttering, he's going to Guns N' Roses tonight. He's very excited to see some of his heroes. Yeah. Axl Rose slash... Duff. D- <laughs> Duff Light. Duff Dry. Duff, Duff Dry. On drums is Cherry Duff. Cherry Duff. Tartar Control Duff. Uh, yeah, Big Guns and Roses show tonight. I'll be going there. We are recording a bit early. Um, I uh, repeatedly thanked Arash off the air to be for being malleable with he's, uh, the he's start time. Me, he's thanking me too much for showing up a couple hours earlier. A couple hours. And now I get to go have time to go get my flu shot and watch Condor Bedard. Destroy the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's true. That's it's, true. All positives. Two quick little things I want to touch on. Uh, next week's show is a little questionable because I will be in uh, Nashville and Tennessee with my family checking out the Canucks no, I'll game. Have, I'll have, it's time for the solo show. If you it's could, It's time for the solo show. People have been asking about it, and those people, specifically only me, have been asking for it. Literally no one else wants this show to be only me because you and Gita are the heart and soul, and I... And the new sriracha that's being poured on it that no one likes because it's too salty. It's still pretty good. Well, do you know that? Okay, we'll yes, keep going we, on. Yes, we talked about Did that. Did we? Did yeah. we talk about the new sriracha? Yeah, you brought it up last weekend at Favor's uh, wedding, which was a, a lovely little time. It was. It was fantastic. But the, the quick bit of housekeeping is we uh, it won't be a traditional format show next week. I'm gone all week. We'll try to put something out that's fun. Uh, but uh, we've teased on Patreon, we've teased in the Discord and on here that we will have uh, new merchandise, uh, locally printed and pressed shirts that will be shipping. Um, you're going to want to keep an eye on our social media channels uh, and our website and just that to, for the quickest way to, to book them. But if you are listening to this and you, we're, we're printing 50 shirts and if you 50, want 50, five, zero. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've had multiple conversations with people who are literally like, I will be buying more than one. And, so yeah. And also they're not our parents. They're yeah. real life people have, that have no blood relation. <laughs> this is true. Uh, it's also uh, two things. It's a, it's a truth and a lie at the same time. What? <laughs> oh no. Uh, but if Richard you, Honeycutt's related to me. No. <laughs> what? I talked to Maury. <laughs> you are and are not the father? Wait, what? <laughs> it's a damnedest thing, Doc. But if you're hearing this and you want, if you're just like, I need to get a shirt, uh, you can email us, pucksinitca at gmail.com, and just get a hold of us. It's an unofficial pre-order, uh, but we are we can accommodate that. But the, the wheels are still in motion, but I'm gone next week. Uh, although I might be vlogging from the Predators Canucks we'll game. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, follow up thing. No Gita this week. She is flying back from uh, Winnipeg, from Manitoba right now. So uh, it'll just be a rashy and me. So everyone's going on vacation but me. You could have come. You're no, part of, I'm you're, not going to You're now. part I'm of the family. I'm not going to America. I don't go to America. It's it's the South. It's, it's true. Well, yeah, dude. Uh, also, if we, have any, if we have any Tennessee listeners in Nashville Probably or Memphis... Fine. Get a hold of us, pucksnutca at gmail.com. If there is one person, just send an email. Uh, so Gita's away this week. My other final bit of housekeeping is we've got the shelf up here. Uh, the shelf has some purchases I've made along the way. The Halifax Mooseheads Cowbell. Um, Yerky 21's Pucks on that, uh, car, deck of cards. Uh, my lovely fiance's uh, Needlepoint uh, PON Puck. Uh, the Gino Ojik Memorial Puck. And two presents from uh, Roger, our dear friend, Cool Indian 101, uh, the co- uh, SNES copy of NHL 94, 
and the uh, signed Nils Hoglander card. Some say he's still paying off that copy of NHL 9. <laughs> but interest rates have skyrocketed so much where Roger actually messaged us the other week. He's like, listen, guys, I, I do do very well for myself, and I do have multiple property properties. But the interest rate I am paying on that copy of NHL 9 <laughs> for, man, don't know about it. Don't know. Don't. Might need it back. <laughs> If you need it back, we'll talk. We'll, we'll I have to pay for my 14 Teslas somehow. We'll <laughs> but we love getting stuff from listeners, the old pucks in it mailbag. And uh, Richard Honeycutt, who you mentioned, dear l- listener in uh, Portland, he sent Gita a present. Whoa. And I have it in my pocket right here. Oh, is that why I slapped you in the bed? What is that? Oh, Richard. Okay. No, <clears throat> give it to me. Give yeah. it to me. Okay. This is your uh, wheelhouse. Yes, this is a, uh, a trainer. Uh, it, this is a Gita trainer card. This is real, by the way. Gita, I believe, in the newest uh, set of Pokemon games, is actually like the league champion. Um, hell yeah. Hell yeah she this is. is a City in Flames, which is one of the newer sets. And this is a PSA rate, or not PSA. It is a rated nine mint Gita trainer card, uh, full hollow. Look at that. Yeah. That is okay. That oh, it's a sick gift. I'm fucking pissed off now because <laughs> I should have gotten this. For you. I don't. This is <laughs> damn it. What am I gonna get her for Christmas now? I'll be like, here's a here's a flannel. <laughs> um, no, but amazing gift. Yeah, Gita. Like I don't know. I'll put that out there. Yeah. Look at that. That's so beautiful. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm gonna put that back in Ryan's breast pocket, Thank so you. Gita can be close to our hearts once again. I love that. Yes. Rash, this is the first time and probably there's been... <laughs> <laughs> You're going right to it, aren't you? This is the first time since, I don't know, seven, eight, some could even say nine years since we felt something, positive. I don't know, sustainably positive. <laughs> Outside of the bubble playoffs yeah. and um, the final push in the 21-22 season to try and make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, it's been very difficult to be optimistic and, and cheering for the team that is the Vancouver Canucks, uh, mainly because as they succeeded or failed, we'd be worried about the uh, termination or impending termination of uh, management or coaching staff. So mm-hmm. I was always a little conflicted. You know, as I watch the games, I want to see them win. But it was always like, man, if Traffic, they... Traffic, though. Draft pick. Well, last year it was draft. Every man. year was like, uh, but the draft by game four, we're like, uh, okay, tank, thumb, tank. Let's go. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not hitting simulate yet. I'm just, I'm yeah. making sure the link still works. So now you got these back to back games against Edmonton. Now, uh, my hot take or, or my kind of perception of everything is, um, I can't think of a set of more polarizing games to set off a season on a, on the right foot than I saw with games one and two with Edmonton. Game one being literally you have Brock Besser scoring four goals. Oh, you know, you, you, you have the team winning 8-1, um, shellacking one of the Stanley Cup favorites, one of the Stanley Cup contenders in the NHL. Then you go to Edmonton. You do, So you dominate game one. Then you go into Edmonton and where um, Gary, Beck, Gary Bettman was essentially like, fuck that shit. Yeah. We're g- refs. I don't care if they even breathe. <laughs> if, if Connor McDavid goes on the power play and he doesn't score, give Vancouver another penalty against for killing the penalty. Yeah. Like that that level of bad refereeing. And also you're facing the other Edmonton Oilers goaltender. So you, you're, you're, you're getting the gamut of like the, the full thing. Um, you somehow survive shots being what, 16 to like 41 or something crazy like that. You survive. You win the game four to three with your backup goaltender as well. Not to mention also in game one, Thatcher Demko. Um, <laughs> he's doing his best Vince McMahon. He's like, he's, he's going to puke. Hey, hey, hey. He's going to puke. And then God, Rick talk. It's like, oh, shit, he did puke. All right, you're done. And then Drance done. does the thing where he's like, uh, he made a puke joke, and R- Rick talk it didn't get it. Did you Did you? No. Read it was great. Yeah, he was just like, oh, yeah, he, he, he got through up everywhere. He's like, oh, in this mask. And his... Anyway, never mind. Uh, it, you read, did he tw- Drance tweeted about it. It's a funny little tweet. Um, God bless God, Thatcher Demko. God bless Thatcher Demko. Um, so I we have to keep everything in hindsight because obviously we un, we've been through this before where we know how quickly things can turn. Oh yeah. Um, what I saw from this Canucks team, I I think game one was again I I don't know if they're going to be scoring um, eight goals a game. Um, but what I saw was a team that bent but didn't break. 
a team that has acquired certain players again like I I I know uh Ian Cole for his ups and downs and certain uh issues he might have um I thought brought a defensive presence, active sticks, right? Yes. Like we're t- we're looking at active sticks in the lane. There's always someone in front of the goalie clogging up the cross uh, cro- um, cross ice or crossing passes there. Um, and there's the system, and they're working within the system, and they're trusting within the system. Um, now again, they Edmonton did go and and, and score, you know, uh, two power play goals on the night. They should uh, on I the mean, second night, and they should because listen, it's it's they have the greatest power play in NHL history. I argue, I am uh, for that argument. For that argument, yeah, I think it is the. If I think could, statistic. I mean, statistically, it is the best. Power if play you could take, I, I think we. I, they were like going through like thirty some odd percent last year. Yeah, they had the best power play last year, and I I posed this to you, uh, or I suggested this to you in a previous toss it or toss it. But I'm like, it, that it was I. Is it the most dangerous power play in NHL history? And, um, and I would say yes, behind. Um, whatever the 2020 Canadian uh, Olympic team was where they got a bunch of randos in there. That was a good power play. Yeah. Joe Barbrule from the points uh, hits the glass. Uh, Willie, what are you doing? <laughs> God damn it, Willie. God, stop giving Lyndon Vase so many chances. It's like me and White Spot. Why do you keep doing it? You've gotten food poisoning like three times. It's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. Um, but, but yeah, great start. Great start for the Canucks. Now, game two. That even in game two, you saw it wasn't the stars. You saw Sam Lafferty, Niels Hoaglander um, scoring goals, and it, it, it was just again like two um, a, a set of games that are so polar opposite in how they were executed yeah. and played. And you saw this team for the first time in such a long time. Be malleable to the moment. Be malleable to the situation. That's the word of the day, kids. And and just like again, I, I said bend but not break. Yeah. We saw it. We saw like uh, every time Edmonton got a power play, we're like, okay, well, here we go. This was nice. Yeah. Like okay, we had a little bit of fun, but now it's going to end six <laughs> three. Um, and then I I'll I also just wanted to say one one other thing, um, you know, I it kept running through my head. If Spencer Martin was in net for that game, no offense to Spencer Martin, we're talking about like an 8-3 game. A hundred percent. We're talking about an 8-3 game. You know, you and met- so, again, I also understand the difficulties with, with Casey. We got Smith, some difficulties but here. Let's, let's just, again, let's let's just look at the hockey player, specifically just the the, the, the X's and O's of, of him being hockey player. Um, a incredible performance. Yeah. So showing that okay, now you have Thatcher in form, your backups also in form, um, and now they're hitting a stretch run where you look at Philadelphia on Tuesday, then they go to Florida, which is really interesting, where the Panthers are missing Ekblad and Montour, and uh, they're going to get 24 minute OEL baby. <laughs> it's going to be the grudge match, and then you're going over to Tampa where. Uh, they're running Jonas Johansson and Matt Tompkins, who just played his first game after first game in the NHL, eleven years since being drafted. So these aren't your father's Florida Panthers and Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, just just not yet. They just need a few players to come back. Yeah, but yeah, we're we're getting to this interesting run where we came in thinking, oh man, like oh, it's Edmonton, so it's they're going to be zero two, yeah. and then oh, they're going to face the Florida teams, and then suddenly you went from them particularly maybe being like. I don't know, two and five to start the season. Now you're like, okay, there's a path for them to, yep. if they maintain and they're healthy and, and they're, you know, Carson Soucy comes back and, and we, uh, I don't know. M- Ilya McKay has done the Ozzie Smith thing where he's vanished off the face of the earth, but he's there. But he's we, ready to play tomorrow. He's ready to play be. tomorrow, but he is being scratched. I'm like, okay, I don't know. Um, when the schedule yeah. came out of rash, uh, this was a this was like you know there is always the Eastern Road swing right off the bat for right. the Canucks, and depending on how uh, imposing the Eastern Conference is, it's either a, a cakewalk for them um, or it is a, a season ender. Last mm-hmm. year it was a season ender, and we kind of didn't expect the same thing to happen this year. But we were you know you re- you were reserved and you were like, well, that's a that's a tall. Test. It that's is. a tall order. That's a yeah. big test for this team. And you kind of looked at starting the season off back to backers against Edmonton and thinking like, well, this is a hell of a hole. They, they better well, remain healthy. They, they better 
figure out a way to climb out of this hole. There is no hole. They are above ground right now. Yeah, they're above ground. And um, uh, I, I wanted to just quickly also touch on the thing that you just said is that, uh, you know, there's this amount of pessimism that's within the Canucks fan base, which a lot of people will respond with, um, oh, well, that's because, you know, they're just not being positive. No, I, I feel like us going into this season, we, as much as things were quiet and we wanted them to kind of get off on on the good foot and on a good hop, um, when we were thinking about the Canucks being potentially down to start this uh, season with the one-game homestand and then into the road trip, um, that's just us being protective of ourselves and understanding what it, this team has been mm-hmm. the last three, four, five years. Um, but now I, I, I don't know, Ryan, it's, I'm not counting my chickens. They look like they have a a spine. Like they look like they have a structure, which is, it's insane to say, because we've just, we've just, uh, we've just kind of seen so much kind of like slap hazardous Vancouver Canucks (laughs) hockey where, um, it's, it's just like, we're like, man, they're just improvising. There, yeah. It's oh, like yeah. you're, when you send your kid to an art class and you're like, yeah, just finger pain, just anything's art, sweetheart, anything's defense, anything's defending, just <laughs> believe what it is. Any Well, I mean, the biggest gripe for me was, you know, in the last two years, anything is goaltending because you ride Damco into the ground or he gets injured because it's hockey yeah. and you put a goalie in. A you goalie. are a goalie. You are a man with pads. Yeah, you own pads, and you can arrive at the rink on time. So to see Casey to Smith, uh, you know, come in for the puking Demko on night one. That I mean, was oh, and then uh, yeah, I and just, getting the win like in, through a win. defensive. We are going to rein in the McDavid Drysidle <laughs> two headed monster, and then McDavid coming out, uh, coming out and being like, whoa. They pulled their goalie and replaced it with a backup. I don't know. That was kind of rude. Yeah. Like, do you want us to bring like a a, a bucket of Thatcher's puke to I, you? Connor? I felt bad for him on that one. Like that's like yeah, he didn't know. He didn't know, and nobody knew. Like we were all like kind of wondering. But then the other ones like, well, they're putting out PP one and well, six ones. Like it was the yeah, first power play. Yeah, it was the first power play they got. They're getting practice. Um, actually, you know, what? I have a question for you. Yeah, is that uh, would you consider that in poor taste? What? Like, let's say you're up eight one. And your starters there, your, your workhorse, mm-hmm. and there's like ten minutes left in the last period, and you're like, you know, why don't we put our backup in there, get him a couple of shots, keep him warmed up, even specifically, even if he's going to go and uh, play the next, the if it's like a back to back situation. I, I'm thinking about it from a baseball standpoint and bringing in a closer. Yeah, to, I love it. Uh, I'm thinking about it from an old school, uh, whiny. That's showing us up. Hey, it, I I have no problem with it. And it's like the the more we learn about uh, the modern athlete and the Kawhi Leonard load management, if you can give Demko fifteen minutes of rest and you know avoid a, a collision for the betterment of the season, go for it. And if the best hockey player literally ever is whining about it, well. Maybe that says more about him than it does about the actual move. Yeah, try to outscore Sam Lafferty. Um, <laughs> by the way, Sam Lafferty. I can we talk? Can we talk? I, this goal is kind of losing. Uh, it, it's making the fan base lose their minds a bit because it's a forward that put his goddamn shoulder down and drove the net. The Canucks have not done that in fifteen years. Redacted from Abbotsford is watching from I don't know some hotel in Siberia. Oh, you can do that, and he's like, "Oh, that's what they meant." <laughs> oh, okay, it's good. I it's good. I don't play here anymore. I, I don't. That's crazy. I, man. I can't do that. that. Can I swear? Well, yeah. That's fucking nuts, dude. I don't know. I, I, I'm not doing that. I, I've I've been asked to do some crazy stuff while I'm here in Russia, but uh, my shoulder down, dude. Shoulder my- down to <laughs> go into the net. No way. <laughs> Stefan's gonna get us on Twitter now. He's he's gonna listen. <laughs> oh no. Uh Lafferty looked really good. Yeah, loved it. You mentioned Ian Cole. Defensive effort act like getting in the lanes like that that's a pl- did he win cups with Tampa? Yes. Oh. Or with F- Pittsburgh. He's won uh he's definitely won. You'll a few you'll look cups. it up, but I when I'm watching him and especially like after plays between whistles, like the guy's a gamer. Like it's every generic 
meathead hockey cliche, but it's like he makes the Canucks difficult to play against. Yeah. At, at the whistle, you know, the bullshit ends. And he's just... Yeah, he won back-to-back cups. With and it looks like it. I'm not saying like, oh, those, you know, I'm not... This isn't an intangibles dialogue, but this is... There's something in the style of play bef- during the whistles and after that makes a big advantage it, it, for the Canucks. It's crazy how you... Like, you found him on the UFA market. Like, you found these guys who have been there, done that, and you're, they're not being at, they're not being asked to do, a f- you know, 50 million different things. Yeah. That's what makes, you know, when you slot specific players into their proper roles, give them the proper usage and proper minutes, it's crazy how amazing players can look. When they're when they're not being asked, okay, hey, hey, Jason Dickinson, hey, Jason Dickinson, what, get, what, you gonna pot thirty this year, baby? Well, you had nineteen once, so you could up your you up your game a you bit. You could right? up your game a little bit. Let's go. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, no, great for the Canucks. I'm really happy. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm really excited moving forward, and it's gonna be great to hopefully let's let's keep it going. Let's yeah. get let's keep stuff going, and then we'll we'll talk about potential trade places for J T. Miller. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, he's, he's, here, he's here forever. Connor Garland. Uh, you're up, buddy. You're apparently going to like 15 different places. Yeah. Uh, breaks my dad's heart because Connor Garland's his favorite connect. Well, if he gets dealt to Nashville by, by the time we're For there. Dante Fabro. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's Dante Fabro from Nashville, Andrew Peak from Columbus. <laughs> I don't know who from the Chicago, but t- Taylor Hall's injured now, so they need another guy who can pass the puck. <laughs> Because well, literally, they don't have anyone that can pass the puck outside of Connor Bedard. Speaking of Connor Bedard and the Chicago Blackhawks, it is currently zero zero. Yeah, we are watching um, Bedard watch in the big smoke, uh, and and that's the topic du jour uh, after this Canucks dialogue. Uh, but Austin Matthews, th- th- I find the Leafs they are an interesting team. They are the most over uh, covered team. They are the most overanalyzed for po- good or for bad team. And they're also the always the most overhyped team. And you have two very unique uh, polar uh, opposite sides of the, of the hockey spectrum. That is all, all the buzz and all the talk right now. Uh, Austin Matthews has back-to-back hat tricks in the first two games of the season. Uh, there's nothing to, to scoff at or whine about. Right. That is an amazing feat. And he looks like he's, uh, starting the season healthy and his wrist is all healed for the first time in a couple of years. So good for him. Uh, and then you have Ryan Reeves, who... Ah, yes. The man who would have stopped Radko Gudis from screaming <laughs> into the face of Joseph Wall. I... You would have stopped him, really? The game was over at that point, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> also, if you watched from any other camera angle, you would see that he was not yelling at the goalie, but at his... Uh, it's like, if you're the goalie and I'm Ranko Gudis, I'm like, yeah! And I'm looking slightly off away from you. Really? He wasn't yelling at him. Okay, I kind of thought... I kind of saw it. It, lo- it didn't look good. And but... then, I, then I saw Ranko Gudis uh, kick, kick Joseph Wall's dog. That is true. I huh? saw that on video. That, that happened. Yeah. I like, Andrew, and then he had a shirt that said Joseph Wall socks. <laughs> and then he then he had a hoodie in the next practice saying what wall? And then it was like Pink Floyd's oh, that's brick smart. on the wall, but it's just like what wall? And then who had the who had the first uh, diss uh, diss track? Oh, uh Biggie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at all the Bedards in Toronto. You you think you've Oh my god, his dad's like His old okay. Dude, so- his dad's Okay, I don't. His dad is amped on something. I'm gonna. I mean, s- his dad just had a a double quarter pounder with cheese from McDonald's. The his blood sugar out of this world. He wants his son to score in in, in Toronto. I didn't have the game on on Saturday because like I was watching the I was watching the Leafs play the the mid is Soda Wild. Yeah, see what I did there. Uh, but they showed Bedard's dad in the in the suite or whatever in Montreal, and he was. It was like Connor Bedard was the starting pitcher in Game Seven of the World Series. Like, right, he was a wreck, and I was like, okay, you know, maybe it's first hockey night in Canada. They just showed him again in the stands for a Monday nighter against the Leafs, and he's just as stressed out. His thinning hair that was luscious locks at the beginning of this road trip, and he's just he has stressed through his. He he just he just wants his he just wants to he just wants them to score. Um, but that's that's fine. Everyone just have your McDonald's. It's okay. You be like Connor Bedard. 
have your McDonald's. I'm sorry. It just blows my mind that his mom is like, yeah, he's never even eaten at a McDonald's. I'm like, you need to know your son. You don't know what your son does. Well, how would you feel if that poly- if you hooked him up to a polygraph and it was true? Oh, if it was true? Yeah. Um, could I then remove his face to see the alien residing within? <laughs> There's no... I just refuse to believe a, a male kid grown up in Lynn Valley had... Like, I just don't... like. You have to understand, there's just not a lot for us to do, like, in North Van. So, the big thing is, I'm sure it was in Abbotsford, you go hang out with your friends at the house, you're playing Halo, you think or, that kid's or Rocket doing... League, or, I don't know, you're at you're at Karen Magnuson. They're filming in a the TikTok play, Or dance. you're at the North Shore Winter Club, shooting a thousand pucks, and, you know, it's 11 o'clock, there's nowhere open, you need some <laughs> carbs. <laughs> the only place is the McDonald's on Main, right off of the Canadian Tire there. You're right by Sealand Hall. Where else is he walking to? The Savon? No. Is he going to Edo of Japan and Park in Tilford? Absolutely not. Is he going to the Italian Iranian combination restaurant? That's actually really good. That place. It's I want to go expensive, but it's. I'd expensive. like to go there with you. That's good. And I maybe. Have you ever had Iranian food? Um, I'd say Middle Eastern. Whoa. whoa but like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, hey, is there a lot of yogurt to dip oh. stuff in? <laughs> Move on to the next point. We're losing track. Of. Ryan, now Reed, this is a yogurt podcast. Look, so I'm hoping to get some video of of Bedard's dad stressing out because it's cute, but it's also like, okay, all right, calm down. Yeah, Ryan Reeves. I'm a. I go on record. I'm a fan of his. I like what he brings to a game. I'm also aware of what he brings to a game is not that much. Uh, he is something that can he can spark a lineup, or he can, you know he can. You bring him, you slot him in every now and then. Yeah. They're, they're paying him too much. They're paying him too long. And he's gotten in two fights in two games. One you're like, an instigator, though. Drew an instigator. And I'm like, there you go. They're going to think that this is exactly what they need. I have no idea how long that this. How, I, can't, I can't believe they gave him a three year deal. That's fucking nuts. I just don't know how long he it, can. He can't fight every it, night. It's hilarious because Ross Johnston or whatever was on waivers. Yeah, and he went to Anaheim. <laughs> I know. I know he had a crazy long contract or whatever. But it's like, you really want a dude to fight? Like, you can get a big dude to fight who can actually also play for you. Yeah. This and isn't. This isn't the. You don't have the Vegas fourth line where it's like him, Will Carrier, and Tom Zanoshik. Like going around gooning people up. Like, no, this is he's playing with who's he playing with? I don't even know the fourth line. Um, Toronto. He's not playing with Tyler Bertuzzi. He I don't know. He's playing with He's playing with some Matthew no, I don't know, Matthew Nizer, some kid. He's know. he's in a some he, skill kid. I mean, if if you're slotting him in in a third or fourth line role every single night, I think that he's going to be able need to contribute a bit more. And I'm pretty sure like two fights in two games. I could. I'd bet my. I'd bet the house that, that he's. Don't not. bet the house, Ryan. The housing market is too much to lose. <laughs> I would bet a, a a nice, a pretty penny that he's not going to get in a fight. The Blackhawks are like, listen, just. Dude, it, look, it's John Scott all over. Have again. you seen this montage of of Connor Bedard's dad just losing it? Look what. Hi, dude. Just relax, man. He's gonna score. They just showed. He's it. eighteen. Chill out. He's gonna have like nine hundred goals by the end of his career. He better S- stop. Look at him. He's he's like, you know, I don't know why they haven't just given him four goals yet. You know, he's the white savior. I don't get it. I don't understand it. They gave they gave Austin four. Come on. This is what happens when you don't feed your son Mc, uh, chicken McNuggets. Uh, speaking know. of babysitting, um, I I was John go- Tavares. I love how you spell Tavares. The- <laughs> the two E's. Tavares. That's how you s- pronounce it in Ontario. <laughs> I, I wrote this in the notes. Uh, I think it's a good joke and a realistic observation, but he's felt 35 for about 15 years. Mm-hmm. He's always felt old. Now he's, he is the old guy. Now he, yeah. uh, you know, who is the HBO 24 seven or the penguins? That was, uh, all the young guys were living with them. The penguins or the flyers? Uh, well the flyers, flyers was Breer. Yeah. Danny Breer. Coots, You're right. Was, Coots was living with him. Yeah. And then there was that infamous, uh, Danny B's fucking kid was in it and he was being a little shit in the 24 seven. And then he came out to be, remember he had the thing with the wheelchair. Yeah, He pushed somebody's he put, wheelchair, wheelchair down. down the thing. And that entire, the, it was so funny that entire, the, from the moment I saw that 24 seven, I was like, man, that kid's kind of a little shit. And then like 10 years went by. I'm like, <laughs> Oh man, I had the greatest take in the chamber and I just didn't speak it into 
Um, I didn't speak it into uh, reality. Um, in 2012, yeah. you hop on your jump to conclusions match, uh, Matt, and you were proved correct. This idea is terrible. This jump to conclusions, man. <laughs> terrible idea. Office space. Office space. Wait, we're not being insensitive. It's office space. Well, you also did the impression too. Oh, uh, no. Minton Fraser Minton from North Va- or from Vancouver and Ma- Matthew Nyes. Uh, they're living with Tavares, and then Tavares said in some post game or whatever that. Uh, Instead of getting babysitters, he's just getting guys from the team. Sick. Uh, John Tavares does not need a babysitter. He does not go anywhere or do anything. He sits in the backyard and he talks to his lacrosse playing uncle in a weird. Uh, hey, your di- name John? Hey. Yeah, you're John too. That's <laughs> pretty crazy. Small world. Uh, as <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Small world. Anyway, bank with TD. <laughs> TD is a good bank. TD is a good bank. They keep your money in a safe. Well, I'm with CIBC, and they have McDavid right now. In oh, their, they got McDavid. And their does TD ads. have Austin Matthews? I think it's Matthews. TD has a bunch of the Blue Jays right now. What? Why, the f- why do we want those losers? A bunch of Those bums. chokers. <laughs> those dumb. We're spraying champagne because we made the playoffs. Hey, hey. It's hard to make the playoffs in baseball. No, it's not. It's yes, it very is. easy. It's very easy. That is false. You I... just go get Shohei Itani. <laughs> Then you go get um, uh, what if Ichiro t- Suzuki, uh, and then you go get uh, who's the guy that killed the bird? Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson. Randy Bird Killer Johnson. What if I told you? Get, you? Which just let me finish with my baseball knowledge. You go get him, and then you go get Wade Boggs. He drinks beer. <laughs> he seems like he's cool. Uh, then uh, what's it? Uh, oh God, well, I'm trying to think. Of, Jose Canseco. It's really funny because I did. I showed. I I watched uh, Homer at the bat with Katie, and I was just trying. No, Jose Canseco. I don't know. He's a little weird. Uh, Mike who, Sosha. Mike Sosha. That's the. One. It's like, oh man, you have no idea the stress that comes with Major League Ball. You make one mistake, and the media is all over you. Dumps a barrel of like uh, nuclear, n- nuclear waste. waste. He's like, uh oh. Yeah, don't worry about it. Oh man, is this ever great? <laughs> And, and he has a bit where he's like, will I be able to play softball tomorrow? <laughs> oh, no. By tomorrow, you'll barely be able to breathe. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> there you go, guys. That's your uh, Simpsons re- reference of the day for the episode. As we go to break, uh, Connor Bedard does not have any points. Uh, but he has a, a, a goal and two assists. Connor, Connor Garland for Connor Bedard. It's the, it's the only, it's the only thing, and it's the only deal that makes sense to me right now. It's the only deal that makes sense to me right now. For I don't know if I want to take on this Bedard guy. <laughs> His dad seems a little invasive. He doesn't eat McDonald's. Hasn't scored a goal yet. I, maybe this is just the fake news media. This is Elliot. This is Jeff. <laughs> this is all those guys just putting out put, stories? Putting out these stories. For for you know this is Rupert Murdoch. This has Murdoch written. <laughs> you think they you think Jeff and Elliot work for Murdoch? No. And their goal is to 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 harm Elias Pettersson. Tell me. Let me tell you, Ryan. I think Rupert Mar- Murdoch. He's really good. I think he's really good. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. No, I just don't want to get radioed here. <laughs> okay. All right, Ryan. Let's go to break, and then we'll be back with uh, what's the segment. What's the segment that you're you're so in love with? Sauce or and to- sauce and to- or toss? Or it's a, can't, it can't be and. It's an it's a question and a statement. Thank you for getting this far into the podcast. We hope you're enjoying it. We're having a hell of a time recording this. We, of course, are recording this. It is this. 26.1 degrees. We are recording this in the future. As I mentioned off the top of the show, some moving parts, but we are going to have some badass new Pucks and Net t-shirts that are going to be printed locally and shipped uh, by us. This is no mystery bag from some online t-shirt generator. Uh, the quality is going to be there, and... Uh, Here's a little spoiler alert. I want a contest, so these shirts are priced to... Priced to sell. They are priced to sell. They are not going to be this cheap. We are splurging on quality. We are splurging on printing. 
for you, literally for you, because we want you to buy these shirts and not just wear them twice. We want it to actually be part of your rotation. Yeah. We've went out and we've um, created a wicked design with uh, with one of our friends. We're super proud of it. Ryan, this is a this is a big thing for Ryan. It's a big passion project for him as well. He's he's been really pushing for it. Um, and the entire goal and the entire thing for us moving forward with the, with with these shirts was like. Yeah, like you guys go and you buy a shirt and you're like, I don't know if my girlfriend or my partner likes where I'm wearing this. Or would this be a shirt that if you found it in at the thrift, you're like, holy shit, I yeah. don't know what this is, but I kind of just want to wear it because it looks badass. The, the Literally the vibe from day one is we want a shirt that our significant other wants to steal from us and wear. So yeah. that is what we're creating. And this is not this is not a friggin' Gildan. Um, I am very passionate about my t-shirt quality. About I don't want a bacon neck, and I don't want uh, something see-through and itchy. We are we are splurging for quality, and I'm I'm gonna we're tell you right here. If you live in Metro Vancouver, I will drive it to you in an electric Kona, <laughs> free delivery. This is what's going on. Not me, because I drive a gas car. He won't. There's no way I'm. I, that is way too much money. And I, I love you. And I went to the we. I on the weekend I went to Shoppers Drug Mart to the post office to price out uh, shipping costs. Number one, Canada Post is awful, uh, based on the, the the services they offer now. And number two, when you see what it costs for shipping, let it be known we are literally losing money on it. But that is how we love you. This is how we want this to go out. There is only fifty. I've talked to a couple of folks with specific size requests, but you know the general ones are going to be there. We're talking small, we're talking medium, we're talking large, extra large, and even a couple two XLs. But email us, me, pucksonetca at gmail.com or DM us. But I prefer the emails to to say I want one, I want to reserve one because there are fifty, and then when these are done, you got to buy them from Teespring or whatever online. And uh, that'll be that'll be that. But it's going to be price to move uh, and, and support us on he's social media. Do, he's, he's support us on social media, Patreon, all that stuff. But these shirts are coming. They're coming. We only got 50 of them. They're going to be great. Uh, love you guys. Enjoy the rest of, of the show. And uh, let's throw it back to Saucer and Toss It. You know what you are? I'm in the par- You're gonna die! Welcome uh, to the Guns N' Roses uh, Saucer Toss. <laughs> uh, oh my god, no, you weren't kidding. Noah Gregor literally fought. Yeah. Uh, Connor Murphy fought. Noah Gregor yeah. fought. Okay, uh, yeah, no, shit. <laughs> Welcome to Saucer. Oh, toss it every day. We come up with topics to keep you entertained. Oh, we're A gonna talk sick. about Bernard. Or maybe he, his dad. He's had too many coffees. He might be sad when his son doesn't score to write down. Okay, uh, anyway. Uh, oh, God, my voice is gone. Ryan, Saucer, toss it. Boom, 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 boom. Go. Toss it on toss it. You're asking me. Oh, this I way. am. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we got really, we got really into this. Uh, Ryan Saucer toss it. Boom, 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 boom. This two week game, this two game winning streak, Ryan, might be the peak of the Canuck season. This is my one pessimistic. Like, should we savor this? Should we savor this because we just don't know where it's gonna go? Uh, I'm gonna toss that right off the top. All of the uh, terrifying things that we saw out of uh, Canucks teams in in yesteryear kind of are on the back burner right now. I think we should enjoy, you know, a Saturday night win. Everybody is, you know, enjoying, like we haven't had this kind of vibe for a while. Enjoy it. But I don't see a lot of red flags off the top that make me think that this is, you know, this is it for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm tossing it. Okay. So this could be it for me. And you're like, no, Hotel Mira. Good band. Uh, Ryan. Yep. You need to stop giving old rock bands money when they've already made money back in the 80s and 90s but wasted it all on drugs and legal fees. Stop giving them your money. Toss. Ugh. What, what ba- do you think Axel's going to do with your $60? $260. What? Wait. Concerts are, wait. are expensive, wait, young wait, man. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you sitting? On the floor. Oh, floor ticket. Okay. I thought you were like in the nose. No, 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 no. You're no. on the floor. Yeah. Uh, oh, about 40 rows back or nice. so on, at BC Place. You're going to get the new uh, ultra mega COVID. 
the one that comes with a uh, uh, like a you know in the Happy Meals. <laughs> <laughs> I am wearing. A, I am gonna wear a mask the whole show, though. Oh, that's kind of because the idea. trip's coming up. I don't, no, it, the trip's coming up, but it's also like, listen, you know where you're. Listen, I'm not. I, I don't know wanna, where I am. I'm in the COVID need to know, jungle, yeah, baby. You, <laughs> you're gonna die. You're gonna die. Um, I am going to toss it uh, because I think as long as you've known me, yep. this is the first '80s '90s nostalgia show that I've that I've paid for. Really? Yeah. You you went to Hotel Mirror though. Mike's like forty nine. True. Okay. I will work on it. But I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 happily seeing Gunners tonight. I am happy for you. I'm just busting your balls. Ryan, backup yeah. goaltending apparently really does matter. Holy crud! Backup oh. goaltending, yeah or nay? Wow. I am saucing the ever loving shit out Dude, of a. Uh, well, nuts. you know, so many teams, so many Stanley Cup champions go for the pl- a platoon approach. And even if you have a stud starter, um, you need to have a, a backup that can, you know, the Canucks don't have a lot of guaranteed wins on when, the year. When I, I have a, uh, so yeah, when was I'm trying to think of like the last good Canucks backup? It's I'm this uh, is it's in and, and I didn't and I don't want to be like oh yeah it was Demko when he was backing up Marks. I mean like literally like the one the 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 backup Corey Schneider. Yeah, but I don't know if Schneider like that was such a platoon situation. Like I'm talking about a guy who's entire like his job, okay. his career job was to be the backup. And it's Bob Essenza. Yeah, there's Essenza. Um Oh, Johan Hedberg, I'd say. Johan Hedberg was good. Raycroft at the time was good. Razor was pretty Sanford good. Sanford was good. Sanford like we was had okay. the run that that we had like Brent Johnson even was here for that little stretch run or whatever. Yeah. Um yeah, you know what? Give us give us your takes. If you have a if one pops in your head where you're like, this guy was the consummate backup. He was he was the he was he was the twenty gamer, you know. He knew what his job was. Yeah. He came and gave you a nine oh five. He gave you a chance to win. Social media or in the YouTube comments. I want to hear Or come to the Sh- Guns N' Roses show tonight and tell, tell me in, in, Or tell me in Nashville. That kid, Smash that kid rocks honky tonk. Uh, but yeah, when you're, when you're stud, your franchise goalie yeah. is, is puking in his mask. It's great to have somebody not named Spencer Martin. In that, that is true. Number five, Ryan. The Maple Leafs really. Number four. Number four. Now he's killed my momentum. I came in with such energy, and now I've, I've crashed my car into the uh, into a bridge. Uh, just like a Guns N' Roses song, I'm sure, mentions crashing their car into something. Uh, because that's rock and roll, right? That's rock and that's roll. That's rock and roll. Uh, number four, Ryan, the Maple Leafs really should have gone to Genius.com to read the lyrics to The Pursuit of Happiness. Crush a bit, little, little bit, bit, roll, roll it, it up, up, take a hit, hit feeling lit, feeling, feeling right, 2 a.m. summer night. night. No, I, but th- I don't care. Hand on the okay. Driving drunk, care. I'm doing my. my oh thing. no! Rolling the Midwest, Midwest side and out, living my life, getting on. Dream. So this song, um, beyond the fact that it's actually about uh, Kid Cudi's uh, father and uh, his father passing away and him dealing with the like yeah. the reper- emotional repercussions, it's also a song about him being like, in order to take my depression away, I just need to get high and drunk and do drugs. And then he's like, once I'm in that space, I'm good. But everything else is a nightmare when I'm not in that state. And that's the pursuit of happiness. And it was fucking hilarious because as soon as I, you still have to sauce or toss it, as soon as it <laughs> happened, I was like, they really, like, I, I understand every rock song is about doing drugs and whatever, but like Nickelback. I mean, everything's about a hand job in the back of a car. Every fucking Nickelback song is like, by a group of men that I am sure have never <laughs> had jobs in their entire lives. It's crazy how confidently they speak about it in their songs. <laughs> um, anyway, Ryan. I think it is a hilarious cop-out. In reality, the the old the Hall & Oates goal song wore out its welcome years ago. Oh, yeah. I liked it, but it's like, okay, like it's, we're over it. Yeah, we're done. They picked a song that doesn't hit. It is Pursuit not of happiness. Really, I didn't think it was like oh. it. Like it's a very popular song. It's it, one of Kid Cudi's best songs. But I, in a sports realm, yeah, I'm like, think of your best song and is it, would it make it? What, think of your favorite song and would it make it a good goal? A good goal song? Yeah, All Mirrors by Angel Olsen. Don't think so. Yeah, like, so I love you, Angel, but Jesus Christ, no, I don't think it's a good the goal song. it doesn't work. And they're taking this approach as an easy uh, trap door. I'm tossing it because, as you alluded to, literally every GD song in history is about drugs or 
breaking the law or having premarital sex. Premarital sex. And uh, hey. before that, everybody welcome just used. To, welcome to Pucks on Net, the predominant premarital <laughs> sex podcast. In that is us. <laughs> we need Gita back. She'd be like, why are you stopping? And we'd be like, okay. You yeah, don't no. think she would agree with that? Oh, uh, man. Let me tell hell, you, man. hell, man. I think, yeah. She's a standard bear the for, pre- for fucking part, party, live and die, party hard. Keep it, keep it ready. Live and die party hard. Uh, we are. This is Pucks on Net, the predominant premarital sex podcast. Uh, toss. Uh, Maple Leafs just don't know how to pick a banger. Next gotcha. one. Uh, Ryan, it's a little terrifying how much Elias Pettersson is still be uh, going to be able to make uh, as he continues to evolve his game with his next contract. It is. He keeps adding stuff. To his repertoire. To the package. <laughs> he's like he's adding Netflix. He's adding Disney Plus. He's. He's bundling everything, and you're like, oh, God, this is really going to be expensive. If, if they put Sportsnet now in there, I might have to, oh, my God. Uh, I'm saucing it, and I am terrified, and especially when they're like, well, they were, I was listening to some analysis of the team and the lineup and the line makeups, and it's like, well, you know, Petey is the the the, the more responsible predominant center or the, yeah. the two-way. I'm like, wait, when did that happen? Yeah, when did that happen? Um, well, yeah, it's just, uh, we're not only seeing him like offensively dominate, but now he's like, oh shit, he might win the Selkie. Like he's, yeah. he, well, he might be nominated for the Selkie, not maybe not win it, but. Well, Patrice Bergeron has retired. So yeah. I mean, fine. now it's, now it's Andre Kopitar. Sauce the shit out of it. It is terrifying. Nice, love it. Uh, Ryan. Uh, ooh, this is a great one. This is a really good one. Um, living on a prayer is the best Guns N' Roses song in their catalog. I would sauce this. Yeah. You like that song? Yeah. It's great. Yeah, you love Axel him. did such a good job singing that song. Um, you, we got a hold on. So good. He's so good at it, right? Yeah, um, I'm going to toss it. What? What's the best song in their catalog? Well, Chinese d- Democracy. Dead or Alive. Wanted Dead or Alive. Uh, yeah. Or Bad Medicine. Or Born to Run. Really good. I mean, I'm sticking to the Bond. You're sticking Philadelphia. I got to not, not, nod to that. I uh, ever look up if you want to talk about bad lyrics, go go read the Born to Run lyrics. That can't be a goal song in Toronto I'm anytime soon. Go, I'm at the seven eleven right now. <laughs> Don't have money to pay for the girls. Do you know what I'm a little cold, better go get a light. Swear to a baby I was born to me. It's like what? Can I can I give you a little piece of rock and roll history? Yes, Dad. And local history. Of course. Uh Living on a Prayer is by Bon Jovi. Yes. Uh, you know what? what you know what the album is titled? No. Slippery when wet. <laughs> Do you know why it's called Slippery when wet? Cuz he like broke his back while writing the thing. No, because they recorded it with Bob Rock in Vancouver and they they were going to call it something stupid and then they went to the number 5 orange and it was named after the shower on stage there. You guys better be lucky to have Ryan Schapp as your father, guys. <laughs> You've been listening to him for like 10 years. This is your dad. Yeah. I'm the new fun aunt. <laughs> but th- that's your dad. That Your dad just dropped the most dad thing ever in the history of dads. Ryan, daddy. Yeah. Thank you. Well done. Um, Ryan, the LA Kings really, 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 really should have went and got a goaltender instead of Pierre-Luc Dubois. Well, that's Listen, because... This, the, 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 I, I I love your Carly Ray Jepsen reference. So I was gonna say GM there is uh is Luke Robitaille? No, he's the uh, press. Rob Blake. Rob Blake was watching Winnipeg Jets games and he went Pierre Luc Dubois. I really 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 I really like, like you. you. I do. Blah, blah, whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We already have a we already have a Kevin or a Philip Deneau at home, but we need another guy that can't score goals. We need another guy who cannot score goals. On. Uh, no, yeah. I picked. Listen, I know. I, the only reason I picked LA is because I could not get traded to Montreal. <laughs> I love Los Angeles. This was my place I always wanted to play. What about Montreal? Oh, Montreal. Oh. I almost, I forgot about them. Hello, Rob. I need to uh, <laughs> talk to you in the office. A uh, big big toss. Uh, last thing they didn't need they did not need a, uh, a French Canadian two way shutdown center that can't score goals. Hey. Uh, the the Kings can't. Yep. And the other the other problem is uh, their goalies aren't making many saves. So big um, mistake on their big part. Big mistake. Uh, can I give a little shout out to the Buffalo Sabres? Uh, I really like hang on. I, hang no, on. No, Let no, me no. just go through your requests. Yeah. Uh-huh. Four, four F-bombs. Okay. I got four. that one. 
kids listening back. Okay, you have one. See, this is this all is black this outfit. is the media. Look at this. This is biased Toronto media on Sportsnet. It's it's Anson Carter and uh, Colby Armstrong talking about. Oh, who would you pick? Better chance to win a Stanley Cup, Toronto or Edmonton? Where's Vancouver in that? <laughs> We're two and zero. Oh. We're two and zero. Oh. We're king of the mountain. We're king of the mountain. King of the, king of the north. Kings of the north. I yeah, Game of Thrones should have ended uh, right yeah, after you, Battle of the Bastards, but they decided to keep going. Your shout out to the uh, the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, I just really like what they're doing. They're they're ex- uh, they're you know they they went and they signed uh, all their best players to long term contracts, um, and uh, yeah, they went with Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin and uh, Dylan Cousins and yeah, there's locking everyone in. Um, and and I, I just man, they are really just like one. I mean, Devin Levi, uh, Levi, that's the guy that we're uh, we're waiting for. Um, to kind of spring up and, and get his stuff, but yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, look at this. Will the Vancouver Canucks make the playoffs? Uh, what do you, you want? Well, let's ask a rash right now. Are they making the playoffs? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. If they keep going like this, if they keep disciplined in their structure and they just, they believe in it, they just believe that, Hey, like you don't have to cheat. Like yeah. you guys are really good. Um, especially if listen, they can move Connor Garland and get another defensive piece. To kind of shore everything up and, and sign up Ethan Bear. Will Austin Matthews score over under sixty five goals? Under that's I, I like crazy. I like under. that this segment we go from saucer toss it to what the segment is on older Sports rash now. yelling at the TV. No, I am. This is great. This should be older rash yelling at the TV. Okay, yeah, no, Austin Matthews is not scoring over sixty five goals this season. He's on pace for two hundred eighty five. How many goals is Brock Besser on pace for? Like, Case closed. Anyway, here's my, here. Hey, you want you want my two hot takes? No, I don't want your hot takes, Dad. You already gave me your well, you Bob are, Rock one. You already asked me. You say punk rock? Bob Rock. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I was like nothing about no, my no, take. no. Go ahead, sweetheart. Well, you didn't ask me. Canucks will make the playoffs, and I've been since mid September basically telling you they're going to be third in the Pacific. Third, eh? Yeah. So you got Vegas, Edmonton, sure, and then Seattle. And then Seattle. Um, well, you got to score goals to win games. You That's got, true. You also need a goalie. That's true. Um, no, I, I like what they're doing in Seattle, but you're really butthurt because you drafted Philip Grubauer in the Pucks on that. <laughs> My <laughs> fantasy <That's> draft. <laughs> I was right. My strategy was uh, right. It was to a point. It was I was cooking with gas, and yeah. then I'm like, "Oh yeah, goalies." Do you know what my what happened to my strategy? Is that my strategy was doing great, and then someone uh, called me a very important phone call, um, and then I I had to I had to be on call for it, and then I panic picked you know, Corpus <laughs> Um and I was like, "God damn." Uh, ch- Everything was going right too. I should have picked Tristan Jari, but cheers to the uh, uh, this is the f- because of my uh, scheduling error. This is night one of the the 2023-2024 pucks on net fantasy hockey league. Love it. Um, could good luck to everyone involved, and thank you. And and if you want to be involved next year, patreon.com slash pucks on net. Let me pr- plow through. Oh, my other hot uh, my other uh, hot take is Brock's uh, goal scoring uh, dries up quite quickly. Um. We'll see. I think he's. Is he, do you think uh, Bester's going to hit thirty? No. You don't think so? Never. I th- I I think if he takes uh, if he takes Bester's like permanent position in the bumper spot, like he's just that low guy, I think he's got a chance. He's he he's got what a uh, eighty games left. <laughs> he's got eighty games to score twenty six goals. Yeah. Come on, Ryan. That's a goal every four games or so. Yeah, yeah sure. about that. Okay. Maybe. Right. I don't believe it, though. Would you take that bet with him? Yeah. What was it? Okay. So Bar- Brock Besser hits 30 this year. Okay, I'll take a no. Okay. What? What's the bet? A dinner. Because dinner has no price tag. In okay, this is the thing. The dinner, but uh, instead of going out, the person has to cook for the other person. I mean, you've just described, you've just outlined our next Patreon bonus content. It's called The Art of the Deal. I'm just going to take him to my restaurant where everything's already prepared. He's got to make it. A, 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 the, the, you got to make At it. At your house? Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, no, we'll figure something out. No, 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 no. But, sir. Okay, that's the deal. Ryan, Photo op. Ryan has no idea what a pescatarian is. <laughs> I live with one. Oh. A couple Ooh. of news and notes, and then I, I got I to gotta give a quick shout out to the listeners. A lot of Guns and Roses related questions that really? I can sink my teeth into. You know what? I'll let you go for it. I'll let you get into it. Well, no, I want to. Um... No, no, no. We're both answered, but I'm going to let you ask the questions. Oh, okay. Just it's it's your day. I know that you're. Do really you want to go right to questions now? 
Well, whatever. What, what anything else you want to talk about? Um, yeah, a couple of quick news and notes. Um, uh, there's the my favorite installment. Uh, my new my new segment on this show is uh, failed made you flinches. Oh yeah. <laughs> Evan, Bouchard. Evan Bouchard had one uh, on Saturday night against oh who was it uh, J- Dakota Joshua yeah so that warmed my heart that he uh, that he failed at making it, him it, flinch it was very cute that Evan Bouchard was like I'm a tough I'm like mm. there was one last right, year that involving the Canucks and I can't remember who it was but they also did not flinch and I was like thank God can, uh, uh, Canucks have a history of not being flinchers. Yeah, you're right. They they have a they have a history of not being flinchers. Um, yeah, no. So uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that's been happening. Um, uh, Shifley and Connor Hallibuck, they signed yeah, seven, seven year extensions. Yeah, identical deals. Uh, you could make argument that it's not the best move to sign thirty year old players to seven year deals. Who who I you can't who would say that? <laughs> Who's ever done that? Even in the history of this <laughs> neatly run organization. <laughs> Who's ever? Let's. They'll be fine. It makes Ryan and let's look at Ryan and I. I'm almost thirty four. You're thirty. I'll be thirty 30? six this year. Damn. Yeah, old as shit. Damn, you fucking. Let's get you your applesauce. <laughs> Do you want some tapioca, young man? I went and saw Guns and Roses. Okay, okay, Grandpa. Let's <laughs> get you back in the pod. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm very happy that they they signed with the Jets because. With what ha- what was happening in uh, you know a couple you know in Calgary and you know uh, you know the the countdown to when Drysital and McDavid are going to leave Edmonton. Yes, sir. The fact that there was an exodus uh, worry in in Winnipeg that they were able to general manage their way through that and and lock down their their stars long term, uh, it warms my heart and it gives me some hope for smaller Canadian markets. Yeah, I especially for Winnipeg. Yeah, we love Winnipeg here. I want that. We all love Winnipeg. Yeah, I want that team and that fan base to succeed. And like any good, any the majority of NHL contracts, yeah, it's gonna look it ain't gonna be the best in four years. Mm-hmm. But you've got a window to do something now. You've got a window. It's gonna be great. <clears throat> um, finally, uh, we didn't talk about this because we recorded before. Uh, the NHL is a bunch of babies and pansies, and and oh, can I have? Can I have? Uh, one second with us sure with the pride tape yeah so they ban pride tape but as you go on uh through the various uh teams and opening nights um i'll just say i'll just say it's fucking hilarious how you ban pride tape <laughs> because you're like oh i don't know if we can speak on any stuff but uh we don't want the distraction you've talked a lot about world events <laughs> during the opening of uh, of this season and it's been made very clear um through not only world events but also those world events juxtaposed to uh issues happening uh within our own country so like and the tape is the thing the tape is the thing it, there's nothing greater than the perspective that this stupid pride tape ban has ha- happened and shout out to brian burke for coming out and saying uh he's gonna pay for the fines of anyone that wears pride tape yeah good hell yeah uh good on you shove it up their butts like you know uh, screw you and screw you and that's I, all I'll say and i did have a tweet blow up last week and you more than blow up it went nuclear how did you have i have a question for you personally yeah how did you deal with the uh ramifications of that tweet going nuclear in that everyone outside of your social media bubble now came would probably had you had some probably really good replies in that. i had some good replies um but i have there's moments where i am oddly patient and I can see the forest through the trees, and it's when a dumbass. <laughs> who are, I'm not even a dumbass. I know I, it's nah, when somebody that doesn't, and it's it's like where somebody whose values and beliefs do not align with mine. And I know that in that moment, in 280 characters, I'm not going to persuade or change this person's opinion. Yeah, and you just go right for comedy, or you go right for just like. Like what are we even doing here? Like I'm I or I'll just go for like a conversation. Yeah. And so in that moment, I had a lot of funny ones. Um, and then when the kid, when the guys show up that are like making fun of your appearance, I'm like, okay, you're 19. If you're well, at oldest 19, I have nothing to worry about with you, dude. I would just be like, yeah, man, I look fucking goofy, man. Do you, a lot <laughs> of people in this world look goofy? We're all on Twitter. Anyone that isn't on Twitter. 
are the people that look like, I don't know, some sort of Adonis creature that shouldn't look real. <laughs> like, if you're, I'm sorry. We're, we all know where we're at. We're all beautiful creatures and we're all whatever. Um, I will buy that jersey, though. That's a shoot. Yeah. Um, we will find the, the funny thing is, it's like you get people coming in like, it's like, dude, we're not even talking about the vaccine. Stop it. <laughs> God damn. We're talking about price. Here's what, here's what Justin Trudeau wants to do. Dude. Uh, okay, so fun. here's a good example. I had my giant uh, uh, self-serve, soft-serve ice cream oh, yeah. on BC yeah. Ferries, which was taken the day of when I tweeted that. And we oh, went. No. We were going to a wedding, and we got a whole bunch of stuff coming up, and I don't want to get COVID, so I'm wearing... I'm wearing a mask on the BC ferry. When no eight... way did someone fucking. Well, no, on the photo uh, I took of my ice cream when I said, this is me with the engagement. There's the mask sitting on, on the on, table. on the table. And some guy was like, you know, oh, look at you. You're wearing them. You go and you wear a mask, go into a restaurant, you take it off. Like, what's the point? And I was like, and like in the moment, I'm just like, it's a fairy, you idiot. <laughs> and it's like, why do I need to? I'm not going to get anywhere with this guy. So just like bamboozle them with stupidity um, so i had a lot of fun with this you should just always be like shove it up your butt shove my mask up your butt <laughs> it's not protecting me from your germs it's protecting me from your stupid brain um yeah no that's uh i'm, I'm glad you made it through that storm it did blow up and i was like ryan your tweet's blowing up ryan 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 you're trending ryan my parents saw the tweet and they're not even on twitter Ryan, watch out. That's how we do it, baby. Uh, that's how, you've had a great... I just want to say a little shout out to you. You've had a great month on the Twitter. Yeah. You've done great great work. There's I'm a couple of you. things that just uh, when they hit, they hit. But we've all been there, and there's peaks and valleys. Yes, peaks and valleys. All um, right, questions. Uh, Jacob Mueller in the Discord. We'll save the Guns and Roses ones for the end. Uh, he asked this earlier in the week. What are the actual reasons we don't like JT Miller? Are we embellishing and manifesting our distaste for the player because that's what fan bases do? Is there a road where he becomes a fan favorite? And uh, what would that look like? Um, I think he is. I, I would explain the feelings toward JT Miller in that um, it's kind of twofold. One being the contract where it's not his fault. He should absolutely accept that if something's off or someone's offering that. The second has been... Uh, his state of play and where in the really tough times in the last few years, if it's even back, like I, I look back to the most um, specific one, which is like the Holtby issue where it's Toronto, Vancouver, uh, there's a breakaway um, and they score on Braden Holtby and Braden mm-hmm. Holtby like looks longingly in disbelief at JT Miller for like just not back checking. Yeah. Right. It's these little moments where it's like, yeah, man, you need to, I know you're passionate and you're really whatever, but everyone's seeing this. Everyone's seeing you smash your stick on the back of the goal, uh, the goal thing. Uh, when Colin Dealey is not leaving it, it's not, it's it, again, I, I think the thing we've noticed is that we really have begun to understand with him is that it is a passion thing. Mm-hmm. He, he, it's, he's an asshole cause he cares. It's the Kessler thing. Yeah. Right. You get that. You have that shit. You have that vinegar in you. Yeah. Um, it's about how you channel it though. And if he can learn to channel it properly, um, definitely don't want him to lose that, but I think you know, th- just don't be the reason that we're conceding goals and, and we're losing uh, losing games. At the time, there was a lot of turmoil within the organization with Bruce and with the power stru- the you know the media cooking up a power struggle between you know who's the captain, who's this, and who's that, and and who and just like there was a lot of bad shit going around with the team. And so to see JT Miller act out on the ice or on the bench or in the, in the post game, it was really easy to say, Oh, everything that's wrong with this team right now is because of this guy. That's why we got to trade him. We could never keep him long term, And they did. And, and you kind of, you went through that grieving process and then you kind of, we've, we've spent the year, better part of a year learning a bit more about him and mm-hmm. it makes a bit more sense. Add in that he's the whole organization's a lot more stable. Yeah, for sure. Mills in the Discord. He asked this twice. Uh, he asked this on pay, uh, in the Discord, and he asked it on Instagram. I appreciate that. Why isn't Phil DiGiuseppe on power play too? Seems to me like the gritty play uh, any role type we need out there. He has a decent shot. Um. Why is he on PP2? It's probably because they have way too many overpriced wingers that they also need to give time to. And this, I mean, this is without even Mikheyev 
in the lineup. They have a bunch of 20 goal wingers. Yeah. Um, but I will say with, with PDG, like it, it makes that line sing. The mm-hmm. Besser Miller line, like, wow, we. I love what's like, happening there. If they can just keep, like, I don't need, they don't need to be like this all star amazing line, but if the, if that consistency can be there in terms of the effort, um, the down, down low board play, four check, like, yeah, great. Let's, yeah. that's what this team needs. And, uh, I'm excited to, excited to see kind of like the, the progression with everything. Uh, Andrew. Well, uh, you don't want to go over this last one? Uh, sure. Richard is, is, is Pierre, uh, Pierre, Phil DiGiuseppe, Brock and JT, uh, li- uh, is it the West coast express light? I love you, Richard, but BMO is PDG. I Brock is Naslin. JT one. is Bert. Uh, no, but I no. like your, uh, I like your chutzpah. I like your spunk. Hey, I also want to say there was some rough stuff and some heated moments in this, uh, uh, Leafs game. But as we, uh, wrap up the show and finish up these questions, Ryan Reeves has not fought yet, but that could change. Ryan I just want to Reeves point that has out. not fought, and now the Chicago is is winning one nothing. Love it. I thought he was supposed to stop this. Um, Ryan, Andrew, which Canucks best represent Axel and Slash? Oh, this is good. It is a great. It is a such a good Dude, question. Pat Pedersen so Slash. Okay, um, I see where you're coming from. I would just like to say we can do Axel right away. It's J T. Miller. He is, gotcha. the, he is the loudest bark. He's the most vocal, um, emotionally charged. Um, you know, Axel canceled the show in, in St. Louis and just stormed off. And, you know, the emotions would regularly get the best of Axel. Mm-hmm. When it comes to Slash, real name Saul Hudson, uh, he is, there is a go- ungodly talent and coolness and calmness to him. Man of very few words, uh, just very impactful, and you don't, you know, almost understated. Gotcha. Very calm and collected on stage. He is either Pedersen or he's Quinn Hughes. Love that. I'll leave that to you. I have no idea who these people are. Oh. Well, I mean, some I do. Of us I are do. I know. Okay. Well, <laughs> I enjoyed drinking your $40 beer tonight. Uh, for the culture, right? For the culture. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, qu- uh, question to wrap everything up. Uh, which Canuck- Oh, no, we're doing all of these. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ryan, you have to get to the show. We got time. It's f- Okay, go. you go ahead, then ask the questions, go. Use your allu- uh, This is from JVDW at Blue Sky. See, I'm going to let you a- answer all these questions because I don't know what Use answer. your illusion one or two and why. Well, <laughs> use your illusion two for you could be mine and pretty tied up. Um but and civil war and 14 years <laughs> but user illusion one's pretty good too um on how what word is that what word is what oh uh, i have no idea i'm sorry i have no idea what on ker heinches connection how old were you when uh, the user illusion albums came out that was 91 arguably one of the best years for uh, rock music. i was two i would have been three turn four in december and finally, uh, Double Downey Jr., this is a big-time movie producer, Matt Kerr himself. Huge movie producer. Uh, I was on his hot action podcast um, and uh, this week. It was a lot Give of fun. Give it a list. Guy, is, is it on um, YouTube? YouTube. Yeah, go, go to YouTube. Go to hot action podcast for all your sports betting needs. Yeah, we had a uh, mainly had a, football. I would assume mainly football. mainly football. Okay. But he did give me a prop bet, which was would the Canucks Ooh. get seven points in the month of October? And I said they would. Three more to go. Three more to go, baby. Uh, he asked, which Canuck would be the funniest to scream, welcome to the jungle, baby. We're going to watch you die. Quinn Hughes. Because he would say it in such a depressed, low tone that it would be the funniest thing. He'd be like, he'd get the mic, he'd be like, welcome um, <clears throat> welcome to the jungle, baby. We're going to watch you die. <laughs> and then, <laughs> like, Quinn, I love you. You're the captain. I love it. I love it. Who would be the second? Uh, who else? Uh, I'm trying to think. Um. Oh, who'd be somebody? Oh, Kuzmenko. Uh, no, Kuz. Kuzi. No. No, he he'd, would, get, he'd show too much emotion no, and like stick Kuzi, his tongue out. Kuzi would be. Um. Oh, Philip Peronic, who's also looked really good. We you don't even him. know what he sounds like. You've never heard him speak. Yeah, but he have his shirt off, and he's anyway, shredded. guys. He's shredded. Oh no, it's one one. It's gonna wrap up the podcast here. Connor Bedard's dad is like this is. 
We Montreal, hope, Montreal typical. We hope you enjoyed this podcast far more than Connor Bedard's what dad I is. Want, you got baby might be hard to handle. Like flame that burns a dandle. We hope like you enjoyed. Like a band of bees a zane. Uh, I hope that they enjoyed our podcast much more than Connor Bedard's dad enjoys this watching sh- his, watching son, his play. son play uh, with wingers that should not belong. Keep anymore. your eyes peeled for our social channels and we'll, we'll try to have something unique out next week. Uh, but enjoy this wave of positivity. and Wave of positivity. What a great Guns N' Roses. The Vancouver Canucks are taking us down to the Paradise City where the where grass, grass is, is green, green and the PD is pretty. Oh, won't you please take me home. See you soon.